Hey everybody, and welcome to the first episode of a new series that I will start on this channel. It is called Arma Mods Weekly, and will focus on Arma 3 mods that have come out recently and deserve a highlight or some more explanation. I will do this series on every Monday, and hopefully this series can then become a good source for anyone trying to pick out some of the mods that stand out, as of course the workshop is bombarded with new mods and missions every day. Originally, I wanted to call this series uh, Mods with Max on Mondays, but I personally thought that uh, to do mods for multiple games in one episode might split the viewership more. Uh, though I am also able to do a mod series on Wednesdays or Fridays where I highlight mods of a different game, so do let me know if there's some interest for that. If you also want to discuss a, or if you want me to discuss a certain mod or mission in this series, then please let me know in the comments down below. For this first episode, I wanted to start with a four-player co-op mission made by the mission creator Paramedic, called The Haunted Forest. This fellow Dutchman has created several horror and zombie-themed missions at a pretty rapid pace. His earlier released mission titled The Survivor Story Reunited was an absolute joy to play as it mixed the freedom of sandbox survival with a clear goal one needed to get to and taking whatever route possible. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that Paramedic continued to make missions where he wanted more of a horror theme with some scares thrown into the mix, something that is quite rare for Arma. The only mission that come to mind, uh, or the missions that come to mind that did this, were the famous Mothman mission, uh, various missions by the talented Phantom, the Haunted Hotel mission, and now also these missions by Paramedic. The original mission was created for single-player use, but shortly after a two-player version and also four-player scenario were uploaded to the workshop. The mission itself is about 30 to 40 minutes long and involves quite a bit of moving around the map on foot or in vehicles. But the creator has done an excellent job at guiding the player by putting signs or lights at the intersections where one needs to take a turn. In terms of the action, it is a mixture between running zombies and regular bandits that in this case represent cultists. Some clever sound design makes it to where the atmosphere feels quite eerie the whole time. We had quite a few bit of lag though in the beginning, uh, which made the first encounters with the zombies quite difficult, but as the amount of units on the map depleted it became way more playable. I think there is room for improvement, but I do, or I am very happy to see that there are still people out there willing to make horror maps for Arma, as it's so rare these days. You can find the link to this mission in the description down below, as you can for all the other mods and missions discussed in this episode. If you want to see a let's play of this mission, then please click on the link of our Looping Real Gaming channel, which also can be found in the description down below, which is run by me and my friends Ryan and Greg. The Paramedic has recently also released his newest mission called Pandemic that has created a lot of traction as well. I'll be sure to take a look at that mission too and future it in one of the upcoming episodes. Incoming. Right side. Right side. Oh. Behind you, someone. Uh. For the next mod, I wanted to showcase one that was a bit older, namely released in December. Um, but this is Max Predator mod. Max Joiner is known for making some of the coolest mod units out there, including the Terminator, aliens, usable melee weapons, and now also a fully functional Predator. The Predator has a large variation of weapons, including the ability to kill enemies via melee attacks while being stealthed. Constant updates make it to where the Predator feels more and more complete each time. The one particular thing I found very impressive is that the Predator is also quite functional as AI. It will follow targets into buildings and will decide whether to use distant fire weapons or close range melee depending on how big the group is. It even has the self-destruct sequence worked into it. And if you look at Max Joyner's YouTube channel, you can get some early preview looks on things like the Predator ship model or better stealth mode. This mod just screams to be used in PvP custom missions, where one or more players are playing as the Predator and the other Marines will be hunted while performing their own tasks. Currently Phantom has stated that he is working on a mission using the Predator mod, so many of us cannot wait to see what he comes up with next. Then we return to another custom mission rather than a mod, and it is the mission called The Outbreak Day 1. I actually got this on my radar really quickly, only when there were about 2 or 3 comments on the actual page. 
The premise looked promising, and I made a video of the mission, which you can watch on the Looping Real Gaming channel. What's all the commotion? Oh, we got a news van here. I was glad to find out the mission found traction shortly after, and was then featured on the workshop front page. Hopefully, giving the mission creator called the Frankster a boost in morale to make many more missions. The mission title basically says it all. It tells the story of the zombie outbreak from the very beginning. It is single player only, and the player plays a character named Alan, who works as a janitor at the nearby hospital, the perfect location for a zombie virus to start spreading. Though the mission is not particularly long, maybe a bit over 10 minutes, it just oozes atmosphere. Everywhere you look, you see small hints of life, like people working at a construction site, people coming home from work, and helicopters frantically flying over as the situation escalates. Buildings are well stacked with props and objects to make the overall scene seem more believable. Though many people seem to enjoy the outbreak, the mission is getting a bit of critique here and there for lacking action or being too short. Some believe it ends rather abruptly. I think it is rather a really good taste of what's to come and really got me into the vibe of a large epidemic outbreak. So many zombie missions or movies tell the story of the zombie apocalypse many months or even years after the outbreak happened. But I personally love the outbreak part the most in any movie, game or book. Just a large scale panic as things escalate and society starts to dwindle down is an awesome feeling and I sincerely hope that the Frankster will keep this premise for any future missions and keep the focus on the outbreak or the outbreak escalation rather than survival in a zombie apocalypse world as we have seen in so many missions like that for Arma already. What the? Oh shit! The door! <gasps> Get out of there! Oh god! Oh Jesus! Oh, we got people shooting! What do we do? Oh my god, there are so many! We gotta get the hell out of here! Can he- can his door open? Yes, he can! Oh my goodness! Oh, they're coming out to the parking lot! Shoot him, people! Come on! Oh god. For the final mod of today's episode, we take a look at a terrain mod, namely the Fuk Toy province map created by Psyfox. It is an early look of a map meant to be played with the Unsung Vietnam mod that is very popular amongst the Arma 3 community. This particular map will focus on the area that the first Australian task force operated in and according to Psyfox, photos were used to help recreate this terrain as much as Arma would allow it. The map itself is really big, and as the terrain is rather flat compared to some of the more mountainous maps, it will be really cool to play scenarios and missions in the liberation mode. As mentioned before, the map is currently in a very early state, and only has vegetation and roads. There are no buildings or bridges yet, though the layout of some of the villages have been set. Currently Cyfox is working on straightening out the road in parts where the uneven terrain messes it up. Nevertheless, this mission has been downloaded a lot of times purely because so many people crave for more Vietnam for Arma. I believe it's because also the passion can be seen here and the potential that a map of this size has. Of course there will also be people going into the editor and creating small villages or towns for their own custom missions to be used. But do please ask permission from Cyfox though before uploading or modifying this map, it is stated on the page itself too. He has already put a lot of time and effort in the layout of this map and we will be sure to check back in with more updates on this terrain have come along. And with that we come to the end of this first episode. We talked about 4 mods today, but I might crank that up to 5 or maybe even 6 if some of the mods are smaller or worth talking about. Let me know what you guys uh, thought of this pilot episode and as I said we will do this every week on every Monday. I've said this in other videos, but I simply need other series beside the cinematic ones as they take so long to make and I need some videos in between to keep the channel afloat. Let's Play, Let's Play series don't necessarily seem to be all that popular anymore and so I thought I might change it up by focusing on mods. 
Next week, I will be back in Holland for a short break of two weeks, but I should be able to record and make another episode of these. Uh, if you know any cool mods out there that you think deserve a highlight, or if you have a scoop on something that will be released, then please let me know in the comments down below, and thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode of Arma Mods Weekly.